Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries. A while back, my mom wanted me to help her figure out a way to add some storage to her tiny laundry room. Because it's a small space, I had to get a little creative. She needed somewhere to actually put her dirty clothes hamper, but also a place to store cleaning supplies and rags. And she wanted a surface to be able to fold her clothes on when they came out of the dryer. So I built her this laundry hamper storage cabinet, and I'm really excited to be partnering with my friends at Craig Tool and build something to bring you the free plans for it. Keep watching to see how it was built and be sure to check out the links below for these plans and hundreds of other awesome free building plans on buildsomething.com. Now let's get to the shop. I started out by making the feet for the cabinet. You could definitely buy your own feet, but since I had a scrap 4x4 board laying around, I decided to make my own simple tapered foot. I measured out the taper that I wanted on the end of my 4x4 and then I cut it out on my bandsaw. It's helpful to note here that you should probably put an X on the parts that you're wanting to cut out versus the parts that you're wanting to keep. Um, it was pretty hard to keep track of when I didn't do that and I ended up cutting one of the feet wrong. But once I saw that the first foot looked okay, I continued cutting the other three feet out and sanded them all smooth. Once the feet were done, then I moved on to cutting the bottom of the cabinet. I set up my Craig track horses and then used my Craig rip cut and my circular saw to trim down a piece of plywood to serve as the bottom of the cabinet. I like to cut down full sheets of plywood this way into more manageable pieces instead of using a table saw. For somebody small and scrawny and usually works alone like me, that's a whole lot easier than trying to maneuver a full sheet of plywood through a table saw. Anyway. Because the edges of this bottom piece will be exposed, I edge banded around the sides to hide the plies before I moved on to the next step. The next step was gluing and screwing the feet in place on the corners of the bottom piece. I measured out where I wanted to place the feet, then applied some wood glue and used the 2.5 inch wood screw to secure them in place in each corner. I actually ended up putting these too far in from the side edges and thought it looked funny once I got the frame on top. So I removed them and tried again. So for future reference, they should be about 3 8 inches in from all sides. Now that the base was assembled, I started building the frame to go on top. I made the frame from 2x2s and assembled using my Craig pocket hole jig and pocket holes and screws. I haven't had a lot of luck using two screws on my pocket holes on 2x2s and 1x2s. I found that my wood likes to crack if I get too close to the corner. So I usually drill only one pocket hole on the ends of these 1x2s and 2x2s instead of two and I just add some glue to help hold it in place when I screw it together. By the way, you can find all the measurements and plans for this build in the link below if you'd like to build your own. And while you're browsing around, be sure to check out my other videos, my website woodshopdiaries.com and give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment if you like it. Once the frame was assembled, I cut and installed the side panels of the cabinet. I cut these down to fit and drilled pocket holes along all sides of the plywood panels. Then I assembled with pocket hole screws into the frame. I made sure that the panel set inside the frame so that the inside of the cabinet was flush. Now that the frame and side panels were in, I attached it to the base. To do this, I flipped the frame on its back and placed the base centered side to side on the bottom of the frame like shown and screwed the base into the frame using 2 inch wood screws from the bottom side. Next, it was time to add dividers to the cabinet. 
I split this cabinet into three sections, two tilt-out bins for laundry and one door that opens for storage and shelving. So I needed two dividers to make three sections. I cut these from my remaining plywood and used a scrap piece of 2x2 two two to trace out where to cut the corners for them to fit. I only had to cut three corners, so I cut them out along the lines using my jigsaw. I test fitted them just to make sure everything fit and then before placing in the cabinet, I drilled pocket holes along the bottom edge of the dividers and one going towards the front, one towards the back on the cutout corners at the top. Then I placed the dividers in the cabinet and attached using pocket hole screws like shown. I screwed the dividers into the cabinet bottom, then attached at the top into the front and back frame. I tried to keep the cabinet on top of my workbench to ensure it was level as I was putting everything together, so that's why I was climbing up there to screw everything in place. Once the dividers were in place, I flipped it on its side to drill shelf pin holes for the middle section. I used my Craig shelf pin jig to do this along both sides so that later I can add adjustable shelves so my mom can store her cleaning supplies in there. Shelf pins just make adding customizable shelves really easy. Then I started working on gluing up the top. I made my top from 2x10s, cut down to 8 inches wide each so that when they're glued together it's 16 inches deep total for the whole cabinet top. I used a table saw to square up and rip the top boards, but you could also use a circular saw for this if you didn't have a table saw. Once the edges were clean and square, I glued and clamped the boards together, keeping things as flat as possible. While the glue was drying, I moved on to cutting the doors. Since all the doors were the same width, I cut a strip for them from my sheet of plywood using my Craig Rip Cut and circular saw. Then I cut the heights down on my miter saw and applied edge banding before moving on. The edge bending is an optional step, it just keeps the sides a little bit cleaner. I lay the doors out and to fancy them up a little, I cut and glued on some half round molding. You can do without the half round molding or you can totally use a different kind of molding, it's up to you. But I really like half round for a simple design and I had some left over from doing our door trim in the garage apartment. I just glued and taped these in place so that um, there were no nails or screws or anything and I just measured out everything on the door to make sure that I wouldn't be gluing them on crooked. Once the molding was dry, I sanded any squeeze out, glue off, and started attaching the hinges. I really love using European concealed hinges, they're really easy to adjust, so I used my Craig concealed hinge jig to drill the cups for the middle door. Then I installed the door in place in the middle section. For the tilt out doors, I drilled the cups and attached the hinges at the bottom of the cabinet door so that they'll pivot to tilt out like a laundry hamper. Once the hinges were attached to the tilt out doors, I installed them in place on the two outside sections of the cabinet. By this time, the glue was dry on the top, so I trimmed it down to the exact size I needed and sanded it smooth. Then I centered it side to side on the cabinet and screwed it in place using two and a half inch wood screws along the front and the back side of the frame. The final pieces to add to the cabinet now were the hamper holders. That's what I'm calling them anyway. I used some plywood scraps to cut out two pieces to serve as the bottom of the hamper holder and some thinner pieces to help support it. I had to miter the edges of the support pieces so that one end was 35 degrees and the other was 55 degrees. I drilled pocket holes along the front edge of the bottom piece and on both edges of the supports. Then attach them together like shown using pocket hole screws. Then I installed these onto the tilt out doors using pocket holes and screws. 
I installed them off the bottom enough so that they would clear the hinge and made sure to keep everything as square as possible. Because with inset European concealed hinges, the doors have a tendency to pull in further than you'd like. Notice how the tilt-in doors currently tilt in a little too far. I added a scrap 2x2 to the bottom of the cabinet. I just screwed it into the bottom and then added a screw on top for fine tuning. Screw it in to allow it to tilt in more and screw it out for less tilt. Simple as that. Now that I had taken care of the tilt-in issue, I needed to also create a positive stop for the tilt out so that my mom isn't opening her door and it open all the way out and spill laundry everywhere. For this, I used another small scrap plywood block and opened the door in about as much as I thought it needed to open, then screwed the block into the side of the cabinet so that the door would catch it when it opens. As a final step that I forgot to get a video of, I stapled a quarter inch plywood back on the middle section of the cabinet and then added adjustable shelves using remaining plywood and shelf pins. If you wanted to skip the tilt out and just use regular doors as well, this could also be really cute as an entryway cabinet or a console cabinet for a dining room or even a TV stand. Let your imagination run wild. <laughs> a huge thank you to Craig and Build Something for sponsoring this video and allowing the plans for this project to be free on their site at the link below. If you want links to any of the products used in this build, be sure to check out the links below for that as well. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy building.